Friends, my sermon this morning is called Looking for Jesus. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. I was thinking this week, if I have ever not been to church on Easter Sunday, if I have, I don't remember it. Maybe in college, I didn't go to church one Easter. I don't know, but I don't think so. Even then, I can remember well the production that Easter was for my family when I was growing up. Our tradition was to dye hard-boiled eggs. You know, none of this plastic egg business filled with candy that children might actually want to eat. No, it was hard-boiled eggs for us. And we'd use these pass Easter dyeing kits. Remember these? And they came with little colored tablets that you dissolved into vinegar. And then you dip the egg with this little wire stick that had a loop in it that you stuck the egg in. And there I was uh, with my hard-boiled egg, my nostrils filled with vinegar, dipping my egg in blue and then in purple uh, and then red, you know, which of course in the end made my hard-boiled egg look Brown, yeah, basically. Brown, hard-boiled eggs. I remember finally the adrenaline of the Easter egg hunt. The uncomfortable but grown-up feeling I had going to Easter service in my new outfit from J.C. Penney's. There was one particular blue blazer that I was particularly fond of and looked good in, if I do say so myself. Uh, all of these years going to church on Easter... It's the people, though, that are the most important. Seeing friends, admiring their hats, gathering shoulder to shoulder to sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. These Easter's have marked the passing of time and the seasons of our lives. This Easter, as nice as our flowers look and as excellent as our music is, can we just talk about for a second how great our music is this morning? Like, wow, wow. I wasn't prepared for that, Gloria. What was that thing called? That thing? Huh? huh? What? Whatever he said. It was amazing. Wow, just so great. As great as the music is, uh, uh, I have to say at the same time, it feels desolate and barren and lonely in here today. As tempted as I am to give you, you know, the stiff upper lip routine and be happy, happy. I think it's good for us to mark this day, to remember this day, this most joyous day of the Christian year, that it is marked with sadness today. The sadness that we are not together, the sadness that underlines that our relationships, our proximity, it matters. That when we're together, we see Jesus in one another, and it works together to help us be uplifted, encouraged, and strong. And maybe you are here, you're watching this service today in the midst of a difficult time in your life. Maybe your family has been touched by coronavirus, directly by someone having it, being sick, or indirectly by the loss of a job or income. Maybe on this day that is all about new life and joy and light, it finds you today down, unsure, and afraid. Maybe rather than feeling close to Jesus as you usually do on Easter, this Easter you're feeling far away. If this is you, I want to tell you that you've come to the right place this morning. You are where you need to be with us. This big empty nave. A community of seekers that have overcome and that are overcoming things. How do we seek Jesus when our days are dark? How do we find Jesus when things are empty, not full? Take a look at our pews. Get ready. I know, duck. Uh, take a look at our pews. There's Lori ducking. Uh, this is, is this a picture of your heart today? Is this a picture of your spiritual life, your walk with Jesus? It's okay. You can come back. Let's consider then Mary Magdalene this Easter. Everything in her life had been 
upended. She had been miraculously touched by Jesus. The seven demons that possessed her were cast out. She followed Jesus, Mary did, and she knew him. She watched him die on the cross and had no doubt been with Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus as they took Jesus' body off the cross, prepared him for burial, and put him in the tomb. You know, there was no porter loring back then. She would have been among the people who cleaned up his crucified body, wrapped his body in the shroud, and placed the cloth napkin over his head. She likely helped to place him in the tomb and saw the stone rolled in front of it. And early on that Sunday morning, the Sabbath over, she bravely went back to the tomb. We can learn something from this, friends. The difficult, dead things in our life must be faced. It isn't fun to face the bad things. It's easier to try to forget to medicate that pain with something or someone else. Mary Magdalene doesn't do that, you see. She gets up early, she rises in the darkness and goes up to the spot to face it. Friends, don't wait for the light to get moving. Magdalene, she gets up in the midst of her darkness. And when she does, she finds a stone rolled away. And, of course, she thinks the worst. There's been a thief. When we're down like this, we look for more pain to be added to the pain that we're already in, don't we? So she runs to go get Peter and John, and they run to the tomb to see for themselves. The younger guy, John, gets there first, sees the stone rolled away, but doesn't go in. Peter gets there second, and he goes right in. John then follows, sees the grave clothes folded up neatly, and he believes. And then they both go home. But let's stay with Mary Magdalene. Look at verse 11 with me. In fact, if you would take your uh, bulletin out, this passage is in uh, page 7 in your bulletin, John chapter 20, verse 1 through 18. Look at verse 11 with me. And I'm inspired by this verse. It says, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. Here's the thing we learn about finding Jesus in the, dark in the dark times. First, that you need to seek Jesus your own way. Mary wasn't John and she wasn't Peter. She needed to do what she needed to do. She had to live her own faith. She needed to stand there and just weep. Maybe this is you. Are you seeking Jesus in someone else's manner? What if John had said, hey, Mary, you know what? I've got it. I believe. Let me take you home. She would have missed out on the angels that God had waiting for her. Do you see? Note what she does next. She bent over and she looked into the tomb. She looked in when she was ready. In the midst of her tears, she bravely faced the tragic circumstances this pain, and Jesus always, always honors the soul that seeks him. But it has to be your soul seeking him in the way that Jesus is leading you. Am I making sense up here? Say yes. Yes. When she does this, look at what happens. Two angels are there waiting for her. And I'm knocked out by the manner of fact way that she talks to these angels. Do you see this? In almost all angelic encounters in the Bible, there is fear, there's bowing down, there's worship, not Mary Magdalene. The angels say to her, woman, why are you weeping? And she says to them, they've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid them. It's talking to angels. How was it that Mary was able to do this? The answer is the second thing we learn about seeking Jesus in dark times. It's this. When you seek Jesus, seek Jesus. She's not moved by or satisfied with angels because it's Jesus that she's seeking. Nothing else will do for her. This is important for us today, friends. It is Jesus that we need. Jesus is who our souls long for. We mustn't 
be satisfied with anything or anyone less. May we all be inspired by the determination of Mary, who looked two angels in the face and said, I'm looking for my Lord. Hear me. Woe be unto me this day if I present to you anything this morning that would suggest that you can settle for anything less than Jesus. Woe to me if I say, look upon my vestments and be satisfied. Or look at the flowers, it is enough. Or listen to the music, it's all that you need. Listen, if angels appeared beside me here to my left and to my right, may I still only ever point your soul in the direction of my Lord Jesus. I can remember as a child feeling the presence of my father. If us kids were messing around or roughhousing, doing things we shouldn't be doing, we could feel our father's presence if he came into the room, even if we didn't see him. It was like a flash from the head to the toes. You know what I'm talking about? The rough housing stopped, and we turn and say to each other, oh, man, Dad just walked in the room, didn't he? You know, the same thing happened for Mary Magdalene. Do you see it there? She could feel the presence of someone behind her, and she turned around to look. And notice she thought it was the gardener. This is another thing Mary teaches us. When we seek Jesus, he's always closer than we think. What a comfort it is for us to know that the great Mary Magdalene herself was in the presence of the risen Lord and thought it was the gardener. Maybe this is where you are with your walk with Jesus today. He's with you, you just don't know it. He's speaking to you, but you think it's someone else. He's close to you, but you might think he's far away. And that's okay. But just know how important it is to keep seeking to keep asking, where is my Lord? Especially in the dark times. In our darkness, in our panic, in our pain, in our confusion, Jesus can be with us and we can miss him. But he stays with us anyway. Anybody who has been through something in their, in their life and come out the other side of it knows this to be true. Jesus was with me even when I didn't know it. Then an amazing thing happens. Jesus calls Mary by her name. In an instant, it all becomes clear. The blinders are removed, and she cries out, Rabboni. What a perfect thing to say, for Jesus has taught her, taught her how to overcome, taught her how to find courage in the darkness, taught her how to find new life. And this is the final thing that Mary Magdalene has to teach us this morning, is that one word is all you need. I could preach a million-word sermon, and aren't you glad I'm not? But it will never do you as good as one word from Jesus. You hear that? Hear it? He's calling your name. Your name. And all of our shortcomings, our sins, and our striving, at the tomb of our darkness, he is speaking our name, your name, the risen Lord who has paid the price for your sins on the cross and risen never to die again is speaking your name. Don't you hear it? And if the risen King Jesus is calling your name, who can deny you? What can keep you from him? Who can snatch you out of his hand? Whatever darkness you might be facing today, friends, seek him. Seek Jesus in your own way. Settle for nothing less than Jesus. Know that he's closer than you think, and that one word is all you need. And may your heart hear it, your soul receive it, and your spirit come alive to it this day and forevermore. Amen. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Would you stand with me as you're able? And let's say together this day the Nicene Creed. You can find it there on page 8 in your bulletin. Together.